I've just found out why lithium batteries swell up and why they can still carry on working after they do. Hi folks, well you may remember this battery pack from such videos as the e-bike one I did recently. And I said wonderful things about this battery pack because I'd had it for five years and it had never put a foot wrong. And then a couple of weeks after I made that video, um, I noticed the pack had swelled up and it had stretched out. So I pulled it to pieces to have a look and see what had gone on. And inside this group of four cells that would have fit in here, you can see that one's gone all puffy. That one's gone tiny bit puffy and I'm not sure if that's just because it was pressed up next to that one and those two are still fine and um, I've ordered some replacement cells which will be here in sometime in January so I'm not worried about that and I can easily resolder them but I've seen puffy batteries lots of times but what actually makes them go puffy so I thought I'd um, give, give a few tests on these and see how they compare for capacity once they've gone puffy and um, then open one of these up and have a look and see what's actually inside it and try and see if I can work out what's gone wrong. So this battery pack was fully charged when I left it on the shelf. So I'm working on the assumption that, um, well, the good cell should still be fully charged and the, the ones that have puffed up a bit, well, they certainly won't be discharged. So I'm going to start off just by measuring the voltage across each of these cells. So on our healthy cell, we're getting 3.331 volts. On our slightly puffy cell, we're measuring in at 3.327. That's 0 0.04 of a volt lower than the healthy cell. And on the puffy cell, 3.323. So first thing I'm going to do is run a discharge cycle on a healthy cell and see what the remaining capacity on this actually is. And um, I'm going to discharge at 2.5 amp hours, so this will take a couple of hours. OK, so we finished the discharge on our normal cell. This figure on the screen is actually wrong by 185 milliamps because I removed the external um, load from the system and actually did the discharge at two and a half amps which is C by two so our actual total is 4578 plus 185 which gives us 4763 milliamp hours which is pretty good going for a battery that's five years old for a cell that's five years old so next up I'm going to try the um, slightly puffy battery and see how that one gets on. So our slightly puffy battery after 90 minutes has given up with a capacity of 3748 milliamp hours. Okay so this battery is nearly out of juice now. We're down to 2.14 volts and the cutoff's at 2.0 volts. Um, we've pulled, it's taken just 28 minutes and we've pulled 1180 milliamps out of this pack which is uh, getting towards a quarter of what its capacity should be um, but uh, you can see here normally we'd expect to see a big long straight line at the top of that graph at about 3.2 volts before we drop off and in the case of this cell straight away as soon as we started pulling two and a half amps out of it the voltage dropped down to 2.94 and we've been going down ever since and uh, any second now, this is going to reach the end of its cycle. Are we going to make 1,250 milliamps? Right, so we got 1,217 milliamps out of that pack. So what I want to see is what's actually gone inside of these. Gone on inside of these. So I'm going to take these down to the shed. Now I've looked up on this because I know lots of batteries contain lots of horrible toxic materials but these lithium ferrophosphorus batteries are um, essentially, supposedly, totally non-toxic and like a mixture of rust plus mud. Um, there'll be a copper 
a sheet of copper in there, a sheet of aluminium, and the lithium ferrophosphate paste, I'm guessing. But um, I want to see if I can work out what's gone on with these. I want to have a look at them and uh, see what's happened inside. So I'm going to take it down to the shed, put on some uh, latex gloves, put on a big dust mask as well, just to be sure, because um, I don't really want to be breathing anything nasty in, and um, cut these open and see what's gone on inside them. Right, I'm going to try and crack these open with the absolute minimum of disruption to the actual internals of the cell because I want to try and see what's gone on rather than just smash and crash my way in there. Um, I'm figuring that the best way is either going to be a Stanley knife or a pair of scissors and if I can get away with a pair of wallpaper scissors that will be just fantastic. Now the other reason I'm not too worried about opening this up is these cells are supposed to be intrinsically safe in terms of uh, they don't catch fire if you short circuit them and things like that. So. That's interesting that there's a big dark patch in the middle there off to one side that's noticeably a different colour. I'm not sure if the camera's picking that up but this area here has gone dark and that area is still a lighter brown and that's the same on both sides it's like the cells I don't know become hot in the middle now that's actually a thin plate that can come off further before we go further into that one though I just want to crack this one open and see what's happening inside here as well now, this cell has gone a lot blacker compare the two this cell's nearly black all over so I'm guessing that the black is indicating the damaged areas and actually we've got we can see our exposed copper sheet at the sides there I'm going to crack into this a bit further and there that is uh, got a definite bulge on it there noticeable bulge and in fact that cell is bent from the uh, that'll be from the pack expanding that will have bent that and pulled the corners in and that's probably also why the coppers become exposed there now right, I'm going to have a little play with this one and just see if I can work out the construction of this cell because we seem to have some capped on tape at the sides there to hold the layers together but if I cut my way through that Here, pull these layers apart. We actually seem to be a folded construction here. See if I can unfold this cell. There we go. So we can actually see what's going on with this construction technique now because we seem to be some kind of origami puzzle. And that's a sheet of copper coated with and another one they seem to be a giant folded puzzle oh I see so we fold over it's where you get paper strips and you fold them one that way and over and then the next one that way and over and vice versa and you end up with a big zigzag thing um, I think it's like one of those that one side is folded from one direction and the other side's folded the other to build up layer upon layer It's kind of a bit of a um, solventy smell. I'm just going to open the door, which is going to make lots of noise. And then I don't want to build, breathe in anything particularly unpleasant. Now, I believe that we're supposed to have sheets of aluminium in here. Or well, I looked on um, the internet and it seemed to suggest there would be. Is that. Yeah, there we are. That's an aluminium coated sheet 
And that's basically all we've got. So we've got a copper sheet here, should be, a plastic separator, an aluminium sheet covered with electrolyte, a plastic separator, another copper sheet, a plastic separator, an aluminium sheet, a plastic separator, and so on all the way through that cell. That's our construction. Now, as for working out what failed on that, well, that's an interesting one, because um, these inner sheets don't seem to look blackened at all. This outer sheet was definitely blackened, but the inner layers look reasonably good. Well, it may be easier to see the damage. See there, all right, that's an interesting thing. So actually, each and every single one of these is an individual battery. Each copper separator and aluminium layer makes up one battery, and then they're paralleled up hundreds upon, well, I don't know, probably about 20, 30 individual sheet thick cells are then paralleled up inside the uh, foil container to make one big cell. Uh, interesting. Right. I'm just going to have a look to see if we can work out the damage on this one specifically. And, um, try and get in here looking at the outer sheets first. Now, I think I said I mentioned a solvent smell, but this is definitely drying off, isn't it? This uh, isn't the same colour it was to begin with. So I think there may be some um, volatile component used inside the construction of these. They are supposed to be non-toxic. We seem to have some liquid there on the inner sheet. It's definitely a liquid electrolyte there. But there's some. Um, that's interesting. That's a double sheet there. The inner layer of this looks wrong. And in fact, they've joined the plastic there. That's interesting. I wonder if that's what's caused the failure. This inner layer, again we've got the discoloration there, discoloration there and lots of blotches, lots of discoloration there, and there, and this is throughout this cell, there's lots of areas of discoloration, and um, it's a kind of a dent at the bottom of the cell, I wonder if that was, um, that seems to be across all of them, and I don't think I did that. I wonder if that's what's caused it to have issues internally. So I've had a few hours to think since I shot this video and I've had the chance to look at the footage more clearly. Um, I still haven't got a clue what made that particular cell fail. Um, I didn't damage the battery, I didn't batter the battery, it's in a hard protective case so the cell itself should have been protected pretty well from any kind of physical damage. Um, it wasn't over discharged, it was fully charged and sat on the shelf. Um, Life PO4 batteries are apparently very tolerant to overcharge, so even if there was a fault with the BMS, um, well I would have expected that to have affected all of the cells in that particular group. Um, and it was only really this one that was damaged particularly. I think the less puffy cell next door was damaged by proximity to this one. I think somehow or other this pack has, this cell has developed a short circuit inside and has uh, discharged all its energy through itself, made itself very hot. Um, some of that heat has damaged the cell that was next door to it as well. But the main thing that's happened is the heat has made the electrolyte evaporate. Um, it's made it all turn to gas and that's what's made the battery puff up. So um, anyway, I had great fun finding this out today. This was a good adventure. I hope you all enjoyed it folks and um, see you next time. Cheers!